I mean, it's a FIFA enforced international break. So FIFA said, you all can play games as well. Even if the, <laughs> you sound like the even, children. Even, even, even you if can you go don't and have, play with even the if you big don't boys. have any qualifiers to come, you can set up friendly so Singapore actually will play some friendlies. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a special edition of Yahoo Footballing Mini Weekly. Mini episode. Mini episode. Mini episode. Talking <laughs> international football during international week. Yeah. With me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chia Han Kyung. Right, and let's get straight into it. Do, do we, God, you do do we it. need another international break? Oh, God. No, we don't. <laughs> do we need more international matches? No, we don't. And let I me mean, explain why. Well, look at this, right? Yeah. Let me get into this. Right, I've ahead. used your team mm. as an example, Liverpool. Liverpool have got 20 members, 21 if you include Gakpo now, mm -hmm. of their 28th man senior squad mm -hmm. involved during the international break. They're oh. going to play at least two games. So in the last couple of years alone, if you think about this, we've had Euros because of COVID Indeed. postponed. So we had Euros in the summer of 2021, mm -hmm. the Western mm -hmm. summer. We had the World Cup in the winter of 2022. 2022. And now already in the spring of 2023, we've got Euro 24 <laughs> qualifiers. It is absurd. Absolutely absurd. Yeah. I mean, we have just gone through... What, what has been a draining World Cup. Yeah. Not only for players, I think for fans also. I think we had we took a break from football and then quickly dive into 30 days of non-stop football and then all of us like... And then immediately after that two-week break, back back to uh, club football again. It's like, oh, you know, even us, even fans like like me are like, let's, let's get this season over and done yeah. with. And then now we've got to pause a week for for a couple of, I think, two or two or three uh, games. And then that's it. And then you can wait until June before the next qualifiers yep. start again. Absolutely. It's like, out of nowhere, can't you just move all this March uh, qualifiers to June? There's plenty of time. There's no, there's no uh, uh, summer tournaments. So, And do you know how long it goes on for? It yeah. goes on for an entire year. Yeah. The qualification for the Euros goes from March 23 to March 24. Why? Yeah. It's absurd. And 24 teams will qualify. 23 plus Germany. 24 teams. Germany is the host out of a possible 53 that are taking part in the qualifying. So one whole year, you get just to qualify half. Yeah. It's like, just toss a coin. Yeah. I mean, it's 50-50, right? It's absurd. <laughs> We're going to play for an entire year. And half the team will qualify anyway. And the third place team of the, the group will, will somehow make their way through to qualify. It is a completely, obviously transparent cash grab again, again. by UEFA to just squeeze <sighs> any pips, any remaining seeds of cash left out of this yeah, why, 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 why don't you make, make the bloody finals uh, audience better, you know, and then not let Liverpool fans suffer the, the last final like that? Yeah, and I even included the Nations League farce, oh, yeah. which will also be weaved oh. through this tapestry just, of nonsense. Yeah. It's, just, it's just overkill. And oh. to add to that, who does it benefit? It only benefits the elite. No, yeah, it benefits sure. elite clubs yeah. and elite nations yeah. because they have bigger squads at both club an international level. So an Italian side, French side, English side, they can just about survive. Even big clubs like Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, they have already come out to say it's too much. It's too much. We need rest. We need rest. Yeah. And you know, you got one FIFA already going out all, all out on money grabbing and then now you got UEFA being somewhat their cousins, <laughs> small cousins. It's overkill. Yeah. Only yeah. the poor smaller teams like West Ham will pay for this. <laughs> Spare a thought for West Ham, oh, you know, yeah. and they're half a dozen internationals. Yeah, a few more months before they, before they get relegated. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on to yeah. the three Lions. England well, in action. How much further can they go after the World Cup? And do we really care? Do you know, I had to look it up. I have to say this. I had to look it up. I had actually forgotten. And it's only three months, right? Yeah. And I covered the World Cup yeah. for Yahoo. Yeah. I'd actually forgotten what they did. I had to look it up. I'm not <laughs> kidding. I had to because it's just so many yeah. games, thick and fast. I knew it was quarter final, but I couldn't remember. I had to look it up that Harry Kane missed the penalty. Yeah. I'd forgotten. <laughs> I couldn't remember who they played. France. And it was France, <laughs> right? I make no apologies for this. It's too much. Yeah. It's relentless. Nope. It's overkill. 
I, I, I mean, only the diehard fans will go for every of the qualifying. They'll, they'll only be, be be concerned when it comes to Euros. They will come to the World Cup. But even even then, I think Gareth Southgate now, this, he's just signed a new contract to carry on uh, to carry on the England Pretty national Euros. team. Uh, well, I mean, he he is a decent person. It's almost yeah. Gary Lineker Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no? So 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 it, it's not. I mean, every time you try to want to say a bit a bit uh, criticize him, you you like uh, should I? But in all fairness, that World Cup quarterfinal showed that this is as far. This was as far as Southgate, who who didn't have any actually good uh, club football record to to begin yeah. with. But you know, he he was he's a common sense kind of manager. Correct. Uh, manages the team very well mm. and push them as far as it could go. And now you need that kind of tactical awareness that, you know, those really good club managers bring to to, yeah. to the national team to actually bring the England, who do have a quite a lot of young players coming up. I think they would b- benefit more with a tactical-based manager. I agree. Mm. I do think he's tactically aware. I just think he's innately too conservative. Yes. He will always, every tournament, take England as far as the knockout stage. It's mm. guaranteed. Quarterfinals, round of 16, bare minimum. But that's because of the quality of the squad. Yeah. In the last cycle of, what is it now, eight years or so, that is the best young crop of players mm. England has produced, arguably in my lifetime. Yeah. You know, I grew up with, you had a Glenn Hoddle or you had a Paul Gascoigne, but you didn't have... Bellingham, Foden, Grealish, Rashford. Rashford, all at once. Yeah. That's extraordinary mm. with terrific fullbacks in Alexander Arnold, who can't even get in the side, Carl Walker, and so on. <laughs> Carl you know, let's not mention Carl Walker. <laughs> keep your pants on. Uh, keep right? on. <laughs> so, you know, all of this crop of players, all of this talent, knockout stages should be the bare minimum. Mm. What I haven't seen Southgate's England do once, not once, is overachieve. Yep. At the last World Cup, Morocco overachieved. Mm. Croatia have been overachieving for years. Mm. I mean, Modric is about 107 (laughs) years old, still overachieving. England's never overachieved. They've either just hit their potential or arguably slightly below. But they've never gone that extra because he doesn't play that way. He doesn't take the shackles off. I don't want to be cliche to say, all right, go on, Grealish, do your thing. But the setup. The tactics, the formation, the way he uses Rashford, the way he uses Foden, the way he uses Grealish is not how they're used at club level. Nope. And until that changes, I don't see anything changing. The only thing that I, I would say goes in his in Southgate's favour is that uh, the successes aren't a lot. I mean, you can say Graham Potter, but mm. he's he's now shown up at Chelsea that you know, he's still struggling at the, yeah. the very elite level. I agree. Then who else do you have? Do you have Lampard? Gerard, and there's not much because if you are look, looking for a full English uh, English uh, nationality, then you have to look over, overseas. Which I don't think they'll do again. Which they don't think, I, I also think they won't do again. So slim pickings. Mm. So uh, Southgate seems to be the way to go, which says a lot about England. Yeah managerial uh, track record. Well, two games coming up, Ukraine and Italy. They're playing. Italy will be fun. Italy will be fun. It's good to yeah. have the Italians back. Yeah. We missed they're, them they're, at the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, as I, I, I absolutely agree. They, they won that Euro, Yeah, the, the, the one before, and then it was beating England in the final. In the final at Wembley. So, so you know, it's a rematch, it's a revenge part of, of sorts. But it, I just love the Italians missing out on the World Cup yeah. and being so, the whole, whole country was in mourning and then now there's like, Hopefully they got some fight back, but I know the, the 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 league and the players haven't been too good in recent years. Correct. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'm interested in seeing, of course, Kane is now on 53 goals. Oh, yeah? His joint level with tied with Rooney. Rooney right, yeah. So one more goal, one more goal against either the Italians or the Ukrainians, and he's now the all-time England goal scorer, which is an achievement. But in fairness, as Gary Lineker likes to say a lot, they play a lot more often now, yeah, and they play weaker teams now, oh, meaning. Yeah. That in Gary Lineker's time, Bobby Charlton's time, you played the Soviet Union, <laughs> which was, you know, half a dozen That's countries, a good the best 11 yeah. players across half a dozen yeah. countries. Now, of course, you've got lots of splintered, splintered mm. independent nations. Mm. So he'll do that. Once Kane breaks the record, and I think he probably will, I think that should be it for him. I think end of the season, he's got the Tottenham record. He'll have the England record. 
off he goes. I think Man U, whoever. <laughs> yeah. Man U seems to be the obvious choice. Mm. Break the England record and bugger off. You know, <laughs> just leave. Leave yeah. Tottenham, join a big team. I'll retire. No, he won't retire. No, he won't retire. <laughs> so, that's England. Are you excited to watch England or can you barely struggle to contain your indifference like us? Let us know all about England too. Singapore. Yeah, I'm going to do the... I'm doing the clips. No, 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 oh, send, it, send it to... Oh, if we do it twice a show. Okay. okay. Send it to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. That's all the comments for England, England. and Italy. Now we'll do Singapore. Singapore. He's got it now. Yeah, yeah, got it. Now. Right, tell us it. about Singapore. What's happening? Well, Singapore will also, you know, because it's an international break, right? And then you... I mean, it's a FIFA enforced international break. So FIFA said, you all can play games as well. You sound like the children. Even, even, even you if can you go don't and have, play with even the big you don't boys. have any qualifiers to come, you can set up friendlies. So Singapore actually will play some friendlies <laughs> just to keep the, the river fresh. You know, you got oh, Hong really Kong like. and Macau. It doesn't really set the pulses racing. If not, it's not like, oh, you're going to face Malaysia or you're going to face Thailand. No, nope. you face Hong Kong and Macau. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Hong He's Kong. Doing it again. And by the way, <laughs> Hong Kong is higher than Singapore. In yeah, the I didn't believe that. Yeah, I don't believe this. This is not the show. We're not that kind of show where we whack whack tech on tech. We don't. No. We don't do that. But I was genuinely shocked by that. Mm. I just assumed. Looking here, the lines are currently 160th mm. in the world, and Hong Kong is 146. <sighs> wow. So Hong Kong. What's my maths? They are 14 places. Hong Kong. Come Hong on. Kong. Come on, Lions. Come on, so Lions. So if you if 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 the Lions win this couple of friendlies, could they get enough? Do they have some points? I hope so. The maybe, last time maybe they played Hong Kong, it was a 1-1 one, one draw. 1-1 one, one draw. I looked it up. I mean, yeah. if you look at it, it does feel like, briefly, the end of an era for the Lions yes. and hopefully the start of a new one. I mean, if you look at the recent retirement of uh, Cheryl Ishak, mm. the three most capped players on the international scene for Singapore have now gone. Yep. You know, Daniel Bennett no longer plays for the Lions, obviously. By Haki retired a while Tyler. back. And now we've just lost Sharil. Mm. So it does feel like that's almost the last hurrah, the last remnants of the Raddy era, if you like. It's a whole new younger squad now, mostly. Correct. Correct. And I would even say that the current veterans on the squad are also quite possibly past their primary. Mm. People like Haris Harun, Shadan Sulaiman, um, and I, I think they've been midfield linchpins for so long. We've sort of taken them for granted, and now we, they are coming to the. They are probably in their uh, early thirties mm. or their mid thirties, and I don't. I I think it's very important for Singapore to find people to replace these two midfielders. Yeah, I was looking at the squad. Mm. You said it right there. Mm. It's the midfield and attack yes. where they look a bit light. The yeah. defence is not the bad. Defense, Christopher Irfan, Van Heisen, uh, yeah, Irfan. The, the, two from, the, the two fullbacks are good. Ryan Irfan. Stewart, I like. Yeah. So they've got young players, young big fellas Even coming in the, through. In, in, in the attack, you have Iksan and you have uh, uh, Ilan, Ilan Fandi. Well you, well, you did. Well, we did. Well, now that it's... breaks my heart still. Oh, I mean, still. this is the game. These are the games where the young Ilhan Fandi would have really shone. Yep. You know, he's got that it's ACL, oh, isn't it's it? ACL, shit. So we hope he comes back from that. All right, yeah. so what are we expecting from the Lions in this? What should their expectations be? I, I don't know. It's a friendly, you know, you don't expect them to go rack up big wins or whatever. You know, I, I do hope they bring in new new faces. I would like to see people like Joe Cho, Glenn Quay, who has been doing well for mm. Tampines, just come in. I think I think the coach Nishigaya, this is a good time for, for him to bring in bring in them, have a look at them. After you know the AFF Cup disappointment, you know it's it's good to see new faces and then see how they perform against. I mean, comparable comp- uh, opposition, hmm. so it's a good chance for them. Any predictions? One one again. No, <laughs> no, no I think I think we'll win maybe two nil. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think both games. Yeah, both I think games. Singapore will beat both Macau and Hong Kong. But let us know what yeah. you think. What are your expectations for the Lions? Should they go for broke with young players, young defenders coming through, young midfielders coming through? What do you think the score is going to be? Send all your predictions and thoughts on the Lions to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. That's it. Enjoy the Lions. Enjoy Scarif Southgate's England. (laughs) And we'll see you back here again after the international break. Take care.